So let's talk about the South Africa squad to come to the north to face Scotland, England and Wales. It's a very good squad and indeed it's a better squad than the one that won the Rugby Championship. And that's definitely a warning sign. I mean, in the Rugby Championship, yes, they won. But a question I had a couple of rounds to go was, have they got that complete performance in them? Do they have that total rugby? We hadn't quite seen to that point. And the answer came in that final round, the complete obliteration of Argentina, 48-7. And the answer was, of course, yes. So they're a very dangerous squad as they were. And they've got players added. And the big players that are added are Franco Moster back from injury. R.G. Snayman, who is looking at his peak for Leinster now, which is fantastic for them. Big Andre Esterhazen coming as the backup 12. And fullback slash utility player Damian Willemser, who was looking so good before he was injured. Now he's back from injury and he's looking class once again. Sure, there's a few arguments from players like Edville van der Merwe, maybe the winger who could say, I should be in over maybe Mapimpi or Moody. Or the likes of Hanukum, who said, maybe I should be in instead of Van Staden. There's no Rus either. So there's a few players you could argue about, but generally this is as good as you get. And basically they are red hot favourites in my eyes for a clean sweep. So if Scotland, England or Wales get a win, it's a massive scout for them. So let's talk about a possible first choice team as I see it. Love to know what you guys would think. Now in the squad we see they've got five props, two hookers and one utility. The utility vessels is a prop slash hooker. So I think it seems pretty clear how they're going to go considering how they went in the rugby championship. I think that's going to be Unche and Banambi Malherba and then Marks, Stinnekamp and Koch on the bench. But of course, as you know, I think Thomas de Toy is world class as well. Now look at the second rows. I think this is almost the perfect quartet of Ebenezer Mostert, Nokia and Snayman. Sure, you could say Diago when he's back to fitness, he could be in there. But these four are fantastic. Nokia really came alive in that rugby championship, proving what a quality player he is. However, I still think he's the one that just misses out, starting with Ezebeth and Mostert. And on the bench, you've got Archie Snayman, who on top form, I think he is right now, is probably the best impact second row in the world. But if you said Nokia starting instead of Mostert, I wouldn't complain either. Now, the flankers starting of Khaleesi and Peter Steftatoy is non-negotiable. That's pretty easy. Who starts at eight? Well, many of the commenters in the rugby championship preferred Elric Lowe, who looks very good. But Jasper Visa is the bulldozer. I think he still just about has the shirt. So I think he starts at eight. At nine, you could say it's a bit of a toss up. You've got Hendrickson, you've got Reinach, you've got Grant Williams. I think they're going to stick with Hendrick Circus. He did the kicking for Libok in that last test and that worked really well. So sticking with Hendrick Sir and Libok at 10. So Libok can just play and be amazing and Hendrick Sir can do the kicking to start with until maybe Pollard comes on. The centres are going to be Dielande and Creel, but what's better now is rather than using Am as the backup 12, which he was okay, but he hasn't quite got the power of Dielande. Now you've got Andre Esterhazen back, who is power for power, a little bit younger, maybe a tiny bit quicker, but very much similar players. And at 13, I think it's a really nice battle with Jesse Creel having the shirt at the moment, but Am wanting it back real bad. So two 12s. Two thirteens it works really well. And the back three, I think, is at full strength as well. I think it's going to be Renza and Colby as the starting wingers. But there's plenty of pressure there. Mapimpi can still do a good job. Moody's up and coming. But the big position, I think, the most competitive one in this box squad is 15, fullback. Apaleli Fassi finished with that shirt. I think he'll start with it again. And he showed in the rugby championship he had an all-round game. Really answered any critics there saying he can do it all, defence, high ball and his crazy speed and attack. LaRue, we know, still has great skills, a great distributor. And then, of course, we could have Damien Willemser back in there, who was looking really good before his injury, a little bit stronger, maybe a bit more physical as well. So three amazing options. I think Fassi keeps it for now. Now, how does the rest of the bench look? It depends, really, if they go for that 6-2 split or the 5-3. They could go for both, that's for sure. But I think a non-negotiable is Quagga Smith, the best impact back row, I think, maybe in the world at the moment as well. If it's 6-2, I think Elric Lowe goes in there as well. They like to freshen up a lot of the back row. So I think Lowe going to 8 or blind side, Quagga Smith going to open side, something like that is what they do. If it's 5-3, I think they'd go Grant Williams as a really good impact 9, but they like Reinach as well. Then Andre Pollard and then one of Willemser or Am. If it's 6-2, then it will be Grant Williams, I think. It will be a scrum half 
and probably Pollard because Pollard can play 12 and he's a really good clutch kicker. Willemser could be a number 23 because he can play 10 as well, but I don't think they're leaving out Pollard yet. So that's the way I see it. It's pretty simple. South Africa look red hot favourites. They look a bit stronger in the summer, but they are away from home. Can they be beaten? We will see. Let me know what you think of that squad and what the team will be to face Scotland in that first game. Pop those comments below. Like, subscribe. That would be amazing. And I'll catch you next time.